It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Perfect. Sold. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Lovely day for it. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Every home should have one of these. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> There'll be worthy winners. Nine fifty. You're gonna make a thousand pounds. And valiant losers. No! Will it be the high road to glory? You make me a big profit. Or the slow road to disaster. Are we stuck? This is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Hey, you. I'm salivating. Come on, today's the day. Little tissue. Little tissue. <laughs> We're in East Yorkshire, love. I want to become your Marcus Aurelius, Emperor of the Antiques Road Trip. Okie dokie. It's the third leg with auctioneers Glasgow Gal, Natasha Raskin Sharp, and Darby's answer to Gladiator, Charles Hanson. Ah. I quite like Vesta. Yes. The goddess of the hearth and the home. You can be goddess of the Riley. Our regal deities are pootling around in the 1932 Riley Monaco, the oldest automobile to ever feature on the road trip, manufactured at a time before seat belts were mandatory, don't you know? And she is a beauty. Do you think there's some untapped treasure yeah, I out do. there? I really do. Last time, despite Charles being Charles, <laughs> it's quite dangerous, I think. What's your name? Oh. And Natasha's frothy excitement. Just love tiles. These are so sweet. There was no messing at the auction. At £75. I'll take that. Especially with Charles's arty find on a bus. We're all done at 150. Oh, I can't believe it. We've become a good pair in our journey. Yes. And I want to buy a his and hers. A his and hers. OK, well, good luck with that. The mind boggles. <laughs> Let's crack on, shall we? Natasha started with £200. After her second sale, she has accrued a little more. £264.94p. Charles had £200 and is Mr Moneybags now, with £434.12. I want to buy one old £400. No, you I don't. I do. OK, Charles, don't tease. Do you want to buy a little old Dream big, Charles. Their tour began in Northumberland and Newcastle, but today the party continues in East Yorkshire nudging further to the final showdown in Hertfordshire. I can really smell the Yorkshire air. Oh, right, yep. Can you smell it? No, all I can smell is the gears. Actually, that could be the clutch. <laughs> that could be a clutch. <laughs> Sorry. My <laughs> oh, he loves to ham it up. Our cheeky pals are in East Yorkshire shopping all the way to Cullingworth in the west. First stop, Beverly. Home to the not surprisingly titled Beverly Antiques and Collectors Centre. Look at that. Hold on. This must be our stop. Antique Centre. You know when you feel good yeah. after you. Oh, ever the pleasure, gent. Pleasure. Ever the gent. He is. Now, this place is a veritable maze. 90 cabinets stuffed full over two floors. Let's release the experts. My knee creaking a bit. You should see a doctor, mate. I hope I'm allowed to go into the drawers. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you very much. Just, just checking. Don't to be, you know, trespassing. Oh, Charles. <laughs> With over four hundred pounds, he is loaded. Get that wallet out, boy. The first ever antique I bought when I was eight years old was when I was on holiday in a caravan. I took eight pounds with me and I bought something quite similar to this. And it was a commemorative saucer celebrating the coronation of King Edward VIII. I thought, wow, I made a fortune here. This is so unusual. He was never crowned. That my eight pound investment is now worth two pounds rather than eight pounds. But it got me going and it takes me back. It's still here. <coughs> Crumbs. Might be a bit of me. Just look at you now, Hanson. His compadre is hunting for bargains. She's got just over £260. Well, that's quite cool lined up the back. 
you have, first of all, a paperette. So same sort of shape as a sugar sifter, but a paperette, smaller. And according to the label, we're in 1759. So George II is on the throne and spices have been brought over to England and people are making their food more interesting. It's priced at £89. But then, according to this label, we're in 1899. So here we have them pre-ground, ready for sprinkling. Here one grinds one's peppercorns. Love it. I really like this grinder. I have to say, it's very sweet. The French family Peugeot invented the pepper grinder in 1842, before they became renowned for automobiles. Drive on. I think this is the more interesting of the two. Do people collect silver tableware? They absolutely do. It's only marked up at £45. Sounds like a definite maybe. Now, I spy Hanson. A nice black Morocco case, that drew my eye, I thought this is quite nice. Within the case is a beautiful Masonic. You've got the enamel pendant down here with a crown coronet. And on the back of the medallion, we can see John Hall was awarded this medallion by Lodge 5199 on the 7th of October 1936. And isn't it crazy? That whole object, silver enamel, could be yours for £20. I like it. Charles, this is risky stuff. Hold on, hold on, watch, watch, watch. <laughs> watch a pro in action. Yeah, look at that, hey. I can't watch. What I do we say is going, going. No, 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 it's wobbling, it's wobbling, it's wobbling. It's all right, it's no, all right, no. look. Going, going. Not gone yet. Not gone, OK. Charles. Yes? Charles, can I just give you some advice? Yes. Don't get cocky. Don't get <laughs> oh, cocky, no, please. Not. It's wobbling, please. Hold on. You're not going to do it, are you? Astonishing! I thought we were about to have a smashing time. I found almost his and hers. There's almost a drink for Natasha. Cheers, Tash. Have a big drink. And then for Hanson, keep straight. Have a smaller drink. They're just quite sweet, aren't they? They're little scent bottle jars. This one clearly is hallmarked on here for London about 1902. That's wonderful cut crystal with a conical stopper. It has been smashed just there. But how elegant is that from the Edwardian times? Well, it could be yours for 21 pounds. Here's a smaller one with a bit more embossed decoration on the collar. That one could be yours for 14 pounds. Not bad, is it, when it comes to buying proper antiques? Love them. The his and hers Edwardian scent bottles and the George V Masonic pendant make a total of £55. Bruce is the man in charge. Hi, Bruce. So I, if I bought the two together, £55, I might say, any chance for a Brucey bonus? 35 the three. How much? 35 for the three. Are you being serious? Yes. I'm going to say I'll take the whole lot. I owe you £35, don't I? £15 for the George V Masonic pendant and £20 for the his and hers Edwardian scent bottles, leaving him with nearly £400. We'll catch up with Charlie Boy later. Meanwhile, back inside... So let me just duck in here and grab this, which is very sweet. It's a cotton reel stand, undoubtedly Victorian. Ignore the multicoloured threads. Look at the brown elements. Proper antique, probably about 1870, 1880, something like that. It's a smart, practical object. Sewing is trendy right now. It's not wildly expensive at £58. Stand by the shop's other dealer, Peter. I'm quite interested in this cotton reel stand. Yep. I think it is a practical and, to me, quite delightful item. That's marked up at £58. And the Victorian pepper mill for 45 So £103. I think that I might be offering £65 the pair. I was thinking £70, so... Where are you? Um, for £5, I would accept your £65. Oh, you will? I will. Amazing. Well, I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. Hey, powerful haggling, Tash. <laughs> £30 for the Victorian's pepper mill and £35 for the Victorian seamstress companion. She has almost £200 left. Oh, look at that. Now, after all that shopping, Charles is feeling peckish. 
He's travelled to Barton-upon-Humber in Lincolnshire to discover the roots of a universally loved British staple beloved by the nation for almost three centuries. Food historian Peter Breers will tell us all about this golden turret of baked goodness, the Yorkshire pudding. Way back in 1737, the famous pud recipe first appeared as dripping pudding in a book called The Whole Duty of a Woman. Ten years later, the original domestic goddess, Hannah Glass, coined the term Yorkshire in her smash hit cookery book, The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy. Why did the Yorkshire pud come about? What was the need for it? The main thing about it is it's cheap ingredients, but to make it, you need expensive ingredients. You need lots of coal, which is expensive. You need roast joints, which is expensive. And that means it's probably originated with the mining communities. They had free coal and they always had big joints of beef. As one of the most famous food writers of the time, Hannah Glass's christening of the dish spread fast, and thus Yorkshire became the new name. Nigel Brown, chef and proud Yorkshireman, has brought his barbie to whip up a pud recipe, Georgian style. In goes the batter to a nice hot tray. And then from there, as the beef is now on the spit roast, down goes the lid, and that's where the magic happens. So what happens next? So what happens next is all the dripping from the beef will drip into the Yorkshire pudding batter, and then it will also flavour it, but as it flavours, the heat from the fire underneath and from the sides will rise the Yorkshire pudding batter up the sides. No soggy bottoms allowed. <laughs> on your marks, get set, bake. Oh, look at that. Lovely piece, piece of beef and a Yorkshire pudding rising as we would expect. Rather than the meat dripping being lost to the fire, the tray with the pudding batter would catch all the flavour and fat to make the dripping pudding a filling starter. That needs a few more minutes, look. Taste, test, later. My mouth is watering, look at that. Ooh. And if you'd like to see the modern way, come with me now. I'd love to. Inside Nigel's gastronomic HQ, let's sample Georgian versus 21st century. Aha, the kitchen, so large. What's happening here? Well, while we were cooking the Yorkshire pudding traditionally outside of the barbecue chowls, they put the modern versions in the ovens here. And as you can see, just like magic, they've really risen to the heights of a traditional modern version Yorkshire pudding. Far smaller than the original, the present day creation happened around 100 years ago. Busy housewives found it much easier to drop spoonfuls of the batter around, and that gave you the Yorkshire puffs, as they're called. Now, I just can't wait to dig in, and I think what we ought to do, should we, should we try the old variant first, the antique Yorkshire pudding from the 18th century? I think that you'd find the contrast interesting. Mmm. <laughs> actually, even today, the antique pod certainly has not lost its charm. Good health. <laughs> and what about the 21st century version? This is the most dressed up and most impressive, almost glamorous Yorkshire pull I've ever seen. But let's try it, shall we? Let's do that. Mmm. Mmm. What I would say is it's as tasty as it looks, and I really mean that. And with the onions as well, very simple veg, it sits so well. And we have a great saying in Yorkshire, you don't get out for now. So, <laughs> so who's paying? You don't get out for now. No, and I'll tell you what, this is so simple, but yet so very, very tasty. I think Charles will be doing the washing up. <laughs> this humble pud that has evolved from the pages of a Georgian cookery book has stood the test of time. Here's to another 300 years of the glorious Yorkshire pudding. One last mouthful, I'll say cheerio. and making sure that I keep Charles in check. He's always going to make money. Just keep him in check. Don't let him get too smug. <laughs> Absolutely. Natasha has meandered to the village of Skirla in the East Riding of Yorkshire. This looks more like it.
just going through these glasses. There are, as you can see, hundreds, there are hundreds of glasses. It's probably around 1880 or something like that, the etching. But I'm just wondering, holding it in my hand, I felt there that the foot is really uneven. So I'm looking at it, yeah, if I hold it up, it's far from perfectly round. There are some really nice imperfections along this foot. There's a healthy market for early glassware. Now, there isn't a price. Look at this. This is 25 pence. So how much is Carol going to ask for this glass? I would hope no more than a pound. And I think it's going to be mega cheap. So I think I'm sold. What else? It's hard to see the wood for the trees with the stainless steel, but there's something that sticks out a mile. But I'm quite confident that these are the real McCoy. Stelton, stainless, Denmark. Stelton were established in 1960, but their association with the leading Danish architect Arne Jakobsen, king of functionality, cemented their success. With this pair of candlesticks, what you're tapping into is the mid-century Danish Scandinavian market. Huge right now. These are quite iconic. They were designed to be functional. So a great name, a great country, a great era, a great price. Come on, two pounds. The box is an original, so Tash is leaving it behind. Now, time to talk dosh. Carol, may I interrupt you? Yeah. First of all, I know the price of the candlestick holders. They are two pounds. Let's go with those. Mm -hmm. And then this little bit of glass, I did notice there wasn't really anything more than a pound in that neck of the woods. What's your price tag? To you, a pound. Are you sure? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do it then, Carol. That's quick and easy. I'm very generous, Carol. Thank you. Natasha now has nearly £197. Last of the big spenders. <laughs> not make it up this hill. Lean Come forward. On, just think you're also pudding this way. It's been a long day. Go! Push! Push! There we go. For Yorkshire. Always a drama with Charles. Nighty night. Cock. Good doodle doo! We're in West Yorkshire. What is that small bar Was that you? Stop, excuse me, it's early. We're surrounded by fields. Stupid boy. You really know how to treat a lady, Sorry, don't you? I Take her to a field and then say, is that you that's big? It smells like eggs. Yeah, that's be for yourself. It gets worse. <laughs> Yesterday, Natasha was a bargainista, picking up a Victorian semstress's companion, a Victorian pepper mill, a 19th century crystal wine glass, and a pair of Danish mid 20th century candle holders. These are quite iconic. Leaving her with just under 200 pounds. <laughs> While Charles was thoughtful, he collected a George V Masonic pendant and the his and hers Edwardian scent bottles. How elegant is that? Charles has a smidge under 400 pounds. Look at the glove box now. Have a look. <laughs> oh, it's gone. So oh, very I glamorous. Which one is his and which one is hers? Yeah. Well, what did you pay? Uh, they cost me 20 pounds. No, they didn't. They did. I love them. Their northern sojourn today will be around West Yorkshire. With Natasha dropped off elsewhere, Charles begins in the village of Oldham. Stand by, vintage in Oldham. He just loves tooting that horn. <laughs> Top of the day, and well, there's words to. There certainly is. Which way, Snakey? Do I need to go to find the real antiques? Don't, there we go, right, I'm going that way. Unusual. Come on, Hanson, so what I found on this ledge is a really attractive tea set. And when you first pick up the teapot, you think, wow, what great quality. You've got figures almost in this very peculiar dancing pose. There's me and there's Natasha. It's marked for Fustenberg. Fustenberg were a really important German factory 
who really rivaled Meissen in the 18th century. Quite complete, 10 piece setting, missing one item. Mental note, I love it. There's no price tag, and I will see how much it is a bit later. Nice, Charles. What else can you find with a kitty of nearly 400 smackers? Oh, my goodness me. This here, I love. You'll see all this sort of almost amber staining on the inside of this bottle. It's what you call a file. And if you were a, a woman back in, shall we say, the 1780s, you would take your file to your local perfumer who would decant scent into your file to take home. So it's almost a recyclable transporter of perfume. But when you can smell history, it really puts history into a certain context of what the pungent smells were like back then. Ticket price of this old factory assault on the senses <laughs> is £32. Put that on the maybe pile and keep sniffing about. Quite taken by these light fittings. Look at that, that are hung like that in a 1920s setting and the glass it's beautifully moulded in three sections and they are in a what you might call Bauhaus, Germanic, very modern style, I reckon the 1920s. And they are a really smart pair of hanging ceiling lights. Look at that. That almost spreading base, oops, like a sunburst. And that small little drop of glass on the base there as well, really radiates around. Beautiful. These are Art Deco Hall of Fame lighting fixtures. The glass prisms cleverly provide up light and down light to avoid glare from the bulb. Could be an auction hottie, this. They don't have a price. Now, there's Angie. She can help Charles with the 18th century file and the unpriced tea set, hopefully. In terms of the tea set, what could be the very best price on that? Fifty pounds. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And the file priced at thirty-two. So we can do twenty percent on that. Twenty-five will do as lovely. Yes. I'll take it. Angie needs to call a dealer about the price of the light. Hiya, it's Angie from Vintage in Alton. I'm just ringing about the lights that you've got and what the best price is that you could do on them, please. So one eighty for the pair. Lovely. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. Is that the death? I'll take another fiver off for you. How much? 175. I like them, and it's a big spend at 175, but I think sometimes you've got to take a chance. Is that a deal on 175? We have a hat trick deal. Lovely. Thank you very much. 250 pounds, correct? Correct. My cash is almost gone. Good Lord. He spent a packet on his hat trick of goodies, meaning he has just penny short of £150 left. It's amazing. As I was leaving, they found the actual chain and original light bulb to go with my lights. Let there be light at the auction. Perfect. Even better. Let's leave the illuminated one in his giddy excitement. Meanwhile, Tash has skipped over to Leeds. It's a little-known fact that the city, over 125 years ago, was the backdrop for the very first moving images. The real father of cinematography mysteriously vanished before he could claim his place in history. Curator John McGoldrick can rewind and tell us all. Hi, you must be John. Hi, Natasha. Welcome to Leeds Industrial Museum. Many will credit Thomas Edison as the inventor of the very first moving picture, but right here in Leeds, they have evidence that the title could belong to that of a brilliant inventor, Frenchman Louis Le Prince. He came to settle in Leeds uh, in 1866. He got an invite uh, back to work with the firm of Whitley Partners, who are brass founders uh, based in the city. And what kept him here in Leeds? It was love that kept Le Prince in Leeds and he married the daughter of his boss, which is quite a high-risk strategy. As a child, Le Prince regularly visited the early pioneer of photography, Louis Daguerre, and developed a keen interest. 
But in the 1880s, his obsession moved to the early cinematic technologies with his invention of a 16-lens camera. Le Prince received a patent for this machine in 1888. It was a successful patent in the sense that he managed to get a patent for it, but it wasn't ultimately a successful invention. It was more of a stepping stone working towards his ultimate single lens camera. The Le Prince single lens cine camera, also patented in the same year, would become a groundbreaking device able to capture a moving image. It really was, it was kind of leap in the dark form. Um, there was nothing else to kind of base his ideas on. So uh, it was very much a trial and error. This camera had the same mechanism to all the moving image cameras that came thereafter. A single roll of film moves from one spool to another through a shutter, taking a sequence of images which would then be projected to show the animation. I've never seen the first ever film and I believe you're going to show it to me. Yeah, we've got a copy of it in the cinema if you'd like to come and have a look now. I'm so looking forward to it. The museum is home to one of the smallest 1920s cinemas in the world. Perfect for watching the flicks. Oh, this is a great setup. What we're about to see was filmed in 1888 and predates Edison and the Lumiere brothers by half a decade. So it's a real sort of slice of life in two seconds. So what are the limitations that allow him to make these very short films. The technology at the time really only allowed uh, the mechanical issues with the camera still unresolved and that the available photosensitive paper could only sort of allow a very short exposure. Round Hay Garden scene is first. Oh, right. Oh, gosh, it is so quick. One, two, three, four, and then just at the end, a fifth figure comes in. So are we able to see who we're watching here? It's filmed in the, the garden uh, of Louis Le Prince's uh, wife's parents' house. Uh, the young man walking uh, at the front, that's uh, Louis Le Prince's son, uh, Adolf. He's after kind of maximum animation, uh, you know, and that was the, the title of his patent. It was, you know, a machine for capturing animated uh, pictures. So just anything to sort of prove that his technology it worked. He took a, another film that year, uh, aided by his son, Adolf, uh, from Leeds Bridge. And you just see a, a bustling, thriving industrial city. The kind of thing that had never been filmed before. So, Louis had proven he could successfully capture the action, and he then experimented with projection techniques, and was due to hold his first public screening in 1890. He had to go back to France to take care of uh, some business, and he got on a train at Dijon, uh, heading back to, to Paris but he was never seen to get off the train at Paris. He just vanished into thin air. Just gone? It, yeah, just gone. Th there are many conspiracy theories uh, about his whereabouts and, and how he disappeared. Uh, some of them include rival inventors uh, looking to, to kind of eliminate him from the picture and possibly uh, steal his ideas. Uh, that's obviously conjecture. Uh, other sort of theories that he might have wanted to disappear himself because he was allegedly sort of depressed about the kind of lack of progress with uh, his projection ideas. Although a technical success, he didn't commercially publicly succeed. But today, his efforts have not been forgotten. Famous film figures like Martin Scorsese have referenced Le Prince as one of the, the, the kind of key pioneers of the industry. So if Martin Scorsese is pa passing the word on, then hopefully that will get the word around. Now, where's our film star, Hunk Hansen? <laughs> the lights are a gamble. In my box here, drive carefully, Hansen. Indeed. Charles is pointing the Riley to the village of Cullingworth, the heart of Bronte country. Can Charles reach the wuthering heights of the trip here? <laughs> Who writes this stuff? Oh. Gently, Charles. Antiques at the mill resides inside this former worsted mill. There are over 30 dealers selling in here. Giddy up and get spending, Hanson. Charles has nearly £150 left. There's my bat. I used to play a lot of cricket. A few years ago. Yeah, I can tell. This is what you call just breaking in the bat. Sorry. Right. Sorry about that. Stupid boy. Ooh! Look who's just arrived. Morning, campers. Well, I went the wrong way. Well, that sounds better. <laughs> no time to dilly-dally. Tash has just over £195. That's silver. 
I know it's silver, but it's a mess. Oh, it's so sad to see. Holes, dents, tears. W and H, Walker and Hall. So we have a fine maker. We're in the first decade of the 20th century. A dressing table mirror made for travel. Take it with you, flat pack. Take it to your hotel, put it on the table, fix your face, fix your scent, brush your hair and off you go. Very glam. It's priced at 18 pounds, can't believe it. Mirror, mirror in the Riley. Who has got the biggest smiley? Did you call for me? <laughs> It's you! I can hear you! I can see you in Snow White, actually. Um, evil stepmother, you've got that kind of vibe. Oh, thanks. <gasps> They're best friends, really. Something's caught my eye. I'm not somebody who wears a lot of jewellery. If I were, I might be inclined to buy this little casket. So there's the mark you want to see on an item like this. WMF. Vertum Furbish Metal Varan Fabric. <laughs> but actually on this one it's WMFB. So the B is letting us know that this is not silver plate. This is Britannia metal. So a nice shiny metal that mimics the appearance of silver but it's actually mainly made of tin. I think that mark also helps us to date it right in the early 20th century. And this is a good colour. It's a beautiful deep red. How much? £65. £65. Let's do a deal, hopefully. Along with the Art Nouveau mirror, let's find Janet to try and snap them up. The first on the list is this Hallmark Silver Walker & Hall mirror. It's very bashed, it's lost its stand, but it's priced at £18, so come on, we can't quibble. Let's go oh, with that. It is nice. And what about the Art Nouveau jewellery casket at 65 so, I'd like to present them to auction together. I think a couple of dressing table items is a nice little lot. So, do you think you would take £40 for it? Yes, we would. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. That's really yeah. kind of you. Thank you so much. I Thank think you. the crowd will go wild. Yes. <laughs> a total of £58 for the Tash combo lot. Speaking of wild... Seriously, this shop's amazing here in Bradford. I had a big twist with my amazing pair of sitting lights. But I think it's now time to stick. Stick, Hanson, pull in your mitts. Let's go to auction. You've got five things already. Let's make a memory. He does love making those. Right, come on, Carlos. Where are you going? I'm going in the passenger seat. You Sorry? are driving. Am I driving? Yes, of okay, course you are. Quite, it's quite hilly round I'm here. exhausted. You must drive. Come on. Keep him in line, Tash. We can have a game tonight, historical quiz, and I can say to you, right, Natasha, which famous queen died in 1694? Best get some shut eye. By the way, it's Mary the Second. With a frenzy of excitement, we're gearing up for a watch of the third auction. Kellam Island Museum stands upon a man-made island over 900 years old. Wow, you know, it's gritty, isn't it? It's a chefing. Yeah. It could be today the full Monty of results. Do me a favour, Charles. Keep your hat on. <laughs> Tasha! <laughs> Perish the thought. Our road trip buddies have enjoyed a Yorkshire whirl and now find themselves in the city of Sheffield. While their antiques have been dispatched to Evesham in Worcestershire. To Littleton Auctions. For sale in the room, on the phone, and the web. The man in command is Martin Homer. Charles bought five items for the sum of £285. Any faves? The George V Masonic Medal is of Masonic interest, and I think we'll have a few followers on, on that one particular lot. Natasha collected five lots for £126. Thoughts, please, Martin? The Danish candle holders, we always do well with, with anything Danish, and they've got a good design, so I think they'll do pretty well. Back to Kellam Island Museum. Inside, we have the viewing comfort of the most famous car to be produced in the city, the Sheffield Simplex. Wow. Look at these, these vehicles. Are amazing cars. Amazing. Look at that colour. 
they capture almost a birth, don't they, of the motor car. Right, are you ready for this? OK. OK, let's just do it. Should we call it Nothing in? to fear. Not much. With the magic of technology, let's watch via a tablet. Let me find clutch control. Let me no. find <laughs> my first gear. First up is Natasha's combo lot of the Art Nouveau mirror and jewellery casket. This, to me, smells of profit. It should make £100. I think so. Hold tight. Surely £30 to start me. £30? 30 £30 Hello. 35 in the room now. The Slow room. going. That's 45 and 50. Add 50 pounds. You want five, sir? 55 in the room. 55. We're three down. Gun. 60, just in time. We're at 60 pounds once, twice, and away at 60. Two pounds is better than nothing. <laughs> you just cannot put your money on anything. I thought that would make 100 pounds yeah. easily. Now, it's the George V Masonic pendant for Charles. I'm not a decorated man. Are you decorated? Are you any medals yourself? I had a few, you know, brownie badges. Where should we go? £30 start me there, please. I don't believe it. £30, 30 I'm just Thank you very much. On platform two. I'm behind you all the way. Thank you very much. Do I see five anywhere? Go on. Just £30. It's a humble climb. Sold at 30 Precisely. Still a good little earner. I think next time we can both buy a medal together. Do you know what? You deserve a medal for that. Get out you of here. You do. Don't encourage him, Tash. It's your 19th century crystal wine glass now. <laughs> Is a naught missed off this price or something? I would like to declare it that was full price. It was. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Bid me please on this one. £20 start me there. Oh, my days. Can you imagine? Go 15 for it. Any interested 10, then? Fantastic. You've the done it. Sent back. <laughs> At ten pounds, is it twelve? I just paid too much. <laughs> at ten for ten pounds. Hold it, ten. From a hundred pence to one thousand pence. Well, listen, I'll take that. I'll take that. It's one heavy pocket of profit. Great return on your bargain buy, eh? It was nice to set myself the challenge of I'm not leaving here without something properly. And you did it. Charles's his and hers Edwardian silver scent bottles. I wanted to buy something to reflect our relationship. Yeah, I saw these in the car. This is the his and hers. Exactly. Let's go £30, please, for the two. Go on, go on. Come on, £20, surely. Keep going. Come on, just don't stop. I've got £20, Good we've got £20. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's what you paid. 20. These are cheap. Just they are cheap. Pounds. It doesn't matter, £21. though, because you're worth it. Comes Good in. lad, small £22. profit. Come on. At 22 25 I've got. Oh. 28 28 in the room. Not 28 <laughs> Sold 28. We are on the knife edge, aren't we? Very nearly they could have made £15, pounds, but they made 28. That's £8 profit. He's great at maths. Well done. I'm happy. Small steps towards the auction goal. I'm very happy. What about the pair of Danish mid 20th century candle holders from Tash? Bid me please on these, ladies and gentlemen. That's for £30 pounds to start me. £30 for You're them. You're going to get it. I can feel it. Let's go 20 for them then. That's what I think they'll make. Anywhere. You're going to get them. 15 for them. The They're world is not in interested. They're worth all of it. I can't believe it. 10 I'm bid, thank you. I can't believe it. It's still a profit. It's Absolutely. still a profit. First. 12 if you want to go. At 12, is it 15? Make anyway? 20, no problem. Well, I'm at just £12, no gentlemen, and I'm going to sell. Fair warned at 12. <laughs> 12 pounds. What a bargain for a lucky bidder. I thought they would make more. <laughs> I thought they would make more. <laughs> now, we have the Georgian scent file from Charles. Well, this is £25. That's a nonsense. That's history in your hands. Let's go £30 start there, please. Surely £30. Thank you very much. Yes, £30. yes, yes. yes, yes. It's a small profit. I'm very happy. Come on! I can feel 50 coming up now. Had £50 on platform to 55 oh. 60 were up. At 60 pounds. At 60. I'm growing. At 60 pounds. <laughs> Sold at 60. Great result, Carlos. Take a deep breath and smell for victory. Next, can Tasha's Victorian Semstress's companion make a few bobbins? I've lost a button this morning, Natasha. Oh. This would have been really helpful to have actually sewn it back on again. Give me £20 for it, please. Oh, it's silver worth the silver thimble as well. 20 I'm bid, thank you. Room's in at 20. Good this will now. move. 25. 25. 28. £30. At £30, are we done? No! £30. Come on! Fair one then at 30. Gold at 30. Oh, shame. The first loss of the day. Oh. I, think, I think maybe next time, use the same machine. Charles next with the Furstenberg porcelain tea set. 
Now, do you know what? I've got high hopes for this. Is it all there? I think it's missing one cup. Some yeah. might say you're one cup short of a full set. <laughs> With me please on this, 50 pounds for it. Go on. Pound it's a really good lot, this. Now. I really rate this. At 50 pounds, do I see five anywhere? At 50 oh, pounds. Oh, are we done, ladies and gentlemen, at 50 pounds? No, anymore. I can't believe that. Going once, going twice, away at 50 pounds. What a lucky winning bidder, eh? You know when you really rate a lot, and I had secret hopes it might make 152.50 really. And now for the Victorian pepper mill from Tasha. The shape's unusual. It's like a bellied glass shape. You think it's for coffee, don't you? It's really attractive. Really attractive. Very, very unusual. Let's go £20 to start it. I hope for 50 20 straight in at £20. Well, Come you're not on. not very forthcoming. At £30, is it five anywhere? Keep going, keep going. I'm at £30 going once. Hold at £30. Not spicy enough to get lots of moolah. I have never seen one. I think it was very pretty. And normally, when it's rare, unusual, things can really take off. Not today. It's the last lot of today, Charles's Gamble by the pair of Holofane hanging lights. They look very classy and, and they look sturdy. If I get out of jail and they make £100, I'll be quite happy. Let's I love it. £100. Go on. £170. That's £380. <laughs> He's out of jail. £300, £400, £440. Hello. Good Lord. £520. You've cracked it. You've cracked it. You've cracked it. You've cracked it. We're at £700. Oh, I can't eight. believe it. This is crazy. <laughs> Pressure amazing. Nuts. Eight hundred pounds. I had no idea there were anything like this. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous is the word. Nine fifty. Are they going to make a face? Ridiculous. Twelve hundred. Thirteen hundred. Gosh, dearer. Fourteen hundred. This is crazy. Crazy. Hanson. Good lord. <laughs> At sixteen hundred pounds. I can't believe this. Ladies and gentlemen, are we all done then? At oh. sixteen hundred pounds, going once, <laughs> going twice. Sold at sixteen hundred pounds. Oh, oh, Tasha! Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> oh, Tasha, I've got to stand up and just say yes. Bravo, Maestro! The gamble paid off. Magnificent. People did tell me you're a legend. Get it. <laughs> And there is oh. only one word, bravo. Oh. That is amazing. Memories, Tasha. <laughs> We're making memory. Gee whiz, we really are. Natasha began with £264.94 and, and has made a tiny loss of £9.56p. She now has £255.38. While Charles kicked off with £434.12 and after a gobsmacking profit of £1,164.76p, <laughs> Charles now has a phenomenal £1,598.88. What a champion, eh? Unbelievable work. Incredible. Round, take a bow. The deepest bow. Oh, no, what was that Michael Jackson move? What was that? I just touch it. I love Sheffield. Next time on the trip, it's giggles galore. <laughs> Charles is a lean machine. Oh. <laughs> and Natasha thinks she has an auction hottie. If you want Arnival, if you want children, if you want something that's going to be worth investing in, 